Hello, and welcome to the first ever episode of the Cat Cam Show. It's March 2010, and today we're going to talk about photovoltaics. To introduce myself, I'm Cat Kim. I am a first year master's student at the University of Illinois, Urbana Champaign, in electrical engineering. Before this, I worked in industry for two years, and this is where I fell in love with power electronics, which is what I do my research in. For undergrad, I went to a tiny school with a ridiculously large diploma, Olin College of Engineering. Uh, it's a great engineering school if you haven't heard of it. And this is my co-host, Mallory. What's that? Oh, she says to get on with the photovoltaics. So, let's start first with something that's a little bit more simple, a battery. So we have a positive side and a negative side. And you always have to make sure to put the battery in the correct way, otherwise it won't work. Uh, and that's because of the electric potential going across here. And this battery holds power and provides power to whatever you're powering. Uh, just to review electric power really quickly in terms of uh, engineering terms, we have P equals IV, which is the current going through something times the voltage across it. So this battery just hanging out, there's no current going through it, and therefore it's not providing any power. But there is a voltage across it, so there's a potential. And if we think about this in terms of um, an ideal battery, so this is an electrical characteristic curve, and this just shows what current is provided at different voltages. So at this voltage, um, this is a voltage of the battery, so it can provide any current. And Thinking back to the power equation, in this case, ideally, we could provide infinite power from this battery. It's not really the case, but this is just a way to think about a battery. All right, so battery provides power at a relatively constant voltage. Next thing we need to know about is something called, which I'm sure you're also familiar with, an LED. So this is a light emitting diode. There's two little uh, batteries on this little circuit board and it's creating a red light. So the potential in the battery's power creates this light. And LEDs are really interesting um, in their own right on a lot of ways, but the reason we need to think about it is because this process of going from electric energy to light can be done backwards. So we can take light and create electric power with it, and that's what a photovoltaic cell is. So here's an example of a photovoltaic cell. It's on, it's on a product that I don't actually use. Uh, ignore This is a battery pack, but ignore that. You can see that it has a little positive and a negative on it, just like the battery. So it has, you know, you have to orient it one side or the other, but it provides power in a very similar way. One of the big differences, though, is that its curve, its characteristic curve, is very different. So here we have it's bounded, doesn't go on infinitely. And remember our power equation, here the voltage, no sorry, the current is zero, and that means there's no power being generated. On the other side, there's no voltage, this is zero voltage, but high current, but there's no power because it's zero voltage. But every point along in between is providing a power. And there's one point called the maximum power point that provides the most amount of power. And that's where you want to operate. You think it'd be simple, but it's actually pretty challenging. Uh, there's different things that affect the the characteristics as well. So think about a normal day in the summer. In the morning is kind of cool, but then it starts heating up. And you want to use your photovoltaic uh, power system because it's providing free energy, right? But one thing you have to pay attention to is that the temperature changes will affect the electrical characteristics. So again, we have um, you know, the cold. In the morning, it's cold. And then it's going to de decrease its power as the temperature increases. And this is really important because you need to make sure to track the maximum power point as these changes occur. All right, so another thing. So you have a solar cell and you know, someone, a tree or something starts shading it. So that's going to also affect how much power it can provide and the electrical characteristics. So here, this time it's affecting more on the current rather than on the voltage side, but when it's really bright out, you get a lot of power, maximum power points here, but as it becomes dimmer, 
uh, you're going to decrease in power. So it's going to change your maximum power point as well. So your control has to be able to accommodate for changes in irradiance, the amount of brightness, and in temperature dynamically throughout the day. That's a pretty big challenge. It's a really interesting control problem. But I won't get into that too much right now because we're trying to keep it basic. So I think that's all I have for you today. Um, thanks for listening, and tune in for the next episode. All right, bye.